I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. In today's video, I want to take a very brief look at the compressor block in the Axe FX3, FM9 and FM3 and just offer up some starting points for anybody who is in general unfamiliar with compression. So I don't want to explain how compressors work in this video. I just want to offer a starting point for anybody who's maybe a little bit hesitant to get their feet wet using compression or who just simply doesn't know where to start and what to listen for. So it's not going to be a practical explanation. There's just going to be a lot of audio examples in here. So I've got my old Strat plugged into the Axe FX3. And what I'm going to do is with this Deluxe Verb Vibrato model, I'll play an example for you really quickly where I go from playing with a pick quite heavily to playing with my fingers quite softly and pay attention to the way the guitar tone changes. <laughs> So it's doing the thing that we would normally associate with an edge of breakup guitar tone. I play really soft, the amp gets clean. I play really hard, the amp gets dirty. And if you love that sort of tone, you probably don't need to put a compressor in your chain between your guitar and your amp. But we will revisit why you might want to use a compressor after the amp and cab in a little bit. But basically, what a compressor is going to do is just reduce the dynamic range of your guitar sound, which practically for us is just going to make the output of your guitar a little bit more consistent. So try this with your guitar. Set up the Studio Feed Forward Compressor and set the ratio to four. Leave Auto Attack and Release on as well as Auto Makeup Gain. Place it between the input and the amp. Then try this. You can use Spacebar as a shortcut if you're using Axe Edit like I am, or just simply assign the compressor to a foot switch on your FC controller or your device. And then try that experiment where you play really heavy and then really light, toggling the compressor on and off. Have a listen to this. <laughs> interesting there because we have this auto makeup gain on here essentially what we're doing is just making anything that's a little bit too quiet a little bit louder on our guitar which if you're playing something like a live show where you need a cleaner sound or you need a gritty sound but you want it to kind of feel and respond like you've got a high gain sound using a compressor like this is an awesome way to get that feeling without having to really change the overall tone of your guitar. This is why using a compressor pedal is so popular for funk, because you can iron out any inconsistencies in your playing and get a super consistent signal being fed into your amp. I'll play something kind of funky with a compressor off and then with a compressor on. <laughs> Again, it's just evening everything out. And to me, it's like all the advantages of distortion without having to use distortion. So try that with your guitar. Just plug in that Studio Feed Forward compressor, turn the ratio up to four, and just listen to what it does and vary your articulation. So play heavy, play light, play around with the pickup selection on your guitar or the volume and tone controls, and just have a listen to how the compressor reacts. Then plug in the same settings with a studio feedback compressor number one. What you're gonna hear is a distinct difference in the actual character and tone of the compressor. So you're kind of fine tuning your ears to listen out 
for what the compressor is doing. And then you can start playing around with different compressor types to hear different compressor characters. This would be like explaining to a non-guitar player the difference between the way a dual rectifier sounds and a cranked up JCM 800 sounds. A non-guitar player would probably just say, it's really loud and distorted, that's what I hear. Whereas a guitar player would say, oh, listen to the low mids in that recto and listen to that kind of upper mid-range bark in the JCM 800. You know, we spend so much time with minutia in that regard, but if you're unfamiliar with, say, compression, this is a great way to actually teach yourself how to be familiar. So again, I'm gonna play that same funk part with the feed forward compressor, then I will switch the channel to the feedback compressor. Have a listen to the changing character. <laughs> here there is a subtle but more pronounced effect out of this particular compressor here and a great way to do this is to play single notes up high if I use the feed forward compressor I get this but if I use the feedback compressor have a listen to how squishy this is now Might even describe that as like a kind of squelchy sound out of there. Again, try to attach these sounds to your ear and you know use whatever descriptive term you want. But I love the sound of that studio feedback compressor as essentially a character compressor on there. And there are lots of other compressor types in here to play around with. So we're doing that thing where we're starting off with, I guess, a pretty transparent compressor in here, this studio feed forward compressor, and we're varying our articulation and dynamic. And then we're playing a similar part between two different compressors so that we can have a listen to which one we like. Another great one I would recommend playing around with is the optical compressor. Again, in the same way the studio feedback compressor just reacted a little bit different, the opto comp in here is a really, really fun one to play around with. Another really basic one though is just the dynamic comp in here. We'll come back to the optical compressor in a second. I've got a very specific use case for that one for you all to try. So dynamic comp, stock settings, just turn the compression all the way up. There's a great place to hear <laughs> that classic pedal style compressor. And if you're a country player or a funk player, this is probably the type you wanna start with. <laughs> You can hear there kind of no matter how hard I play, the compressor isn't letting the overall tone get any more distorted. So if you're playing single note country stuff or single note funk, the dynamic comp can be a great one to play around with. And you know, if you actually want to dial it in, then just dial back this compression control down here. But I do like this one with the compression up above five. So maybe I'll play something funky. <laughs> Just that kind of thing right there. And as you can hear, there's basically no dynamic range in there. All the notes sound super even and super consistent. So there would be some great starting points for compressors in front of your guitar amp. So basically a way of modifying the signal out of your guitar to make it more consistent. But what if we wanted that really lovely front end amp response that I had right at the start of the video. So a lot of dynamic range, but I wanted more consistency in the volume, the overall output of my rig. Let's go back to this optical compressor and let's put it after the amp and cab. So what I've done here is I've set the input level to line level. So it's getting ready for that hotter signal that is coming out of the guitar amp and cab model in here. What I'm gonna do 
is again, I'm gonna do that same example of play heavy or play light and you'll hear the same changes in overall gain response. But when I keep the compressor in, it's gonna keep the overall level a lot more consistent. And the optical compressor has a really kind of classic sound. A lot of people would regard it as like a hit record sound because you've heard optical compressors all over classic recordings. So I'll start with it off and again, heavy light playing and then I'll kick it in. You'll still hear the same changes in gain structure, but the overall level of the signal will stay a lot more consistent. <laughs> That's a great one. I love the sound of that optical compressor. I actually changed the light type in here to EL foil. So it is emulating a classic compressor called the Empirical Labs Distressor. And again, I've just got auto attack and release on for all of this. So if you're new to compression, leave auto attack and release on in all the types that have it. Leave auto makeup gain on in all the types that have it. And just play around with either the compression control or the ratio control on there. And don't worry too much about any of the other controls in there until you get more familiar with the way compressors react with your guitar tone. And you can experiment with different compressors basically to get sort of different character tones. And again, it is very, very subtle. You will have to spend some time letting your ears adjust to what these compressors do. One last tip on here as well. Let's go to that studio feedback compressor in here. And I'm gonna drag it back in front of the amp is what you can do is you can use the input block, basically use this output level control to slam the front end of the compressor a little bit harder. So it's like having hotter pickups in your guitar. And I'll give you an example of that. I'll start with the level at zero. I'm gonna pump it up to nine and I'm gonna play you all out with this example. So any questions or any requests for future videos like this, let me know in the comments below. My custom IR is linked in the video description as well. And we're gonna hear this little input block kind of trick as I play you all out. Thanks for watching. See you next Tuesday.